dominating the race from start to finish was number four, John Surtees of Great Britain. John Surtees has always struck me as the ultimate motor racing, motorcycling warrior. I suppose the most important race of my life is the one which gave me all the direction in a way, and that was the first race I ever won. And on that day at Aberdeer, suddenly on that bike, it sort of sent me a message and it showed for a simple reason from that day onwards, I was on a winning streak. He was a great motorcyclist. And he was also, in my opinion, a very great racing driver. He had tremendous dexterity and understanding of what speed was, and he just took to it so quickly. That first little race when Ken Till sort of said, I've entered you in Goodwood, be there. Uh, I've arranged your license was also special. I mean, I'd never seen a car race before, but uh, not a bad way to start. He was the most extraordinarily competitive person and enormously capable. He was wild. I can remember following him at Monaco, and when you're following him, you saw nearly as much of the front of the car as the back. If you get something wrong, he will let you know it. He'd pick a fight in a telephone booth. I always ask myself, you know, whether I did the right thing over what Colin Chapman had said to me at the end of 1960. But uh, at the same time, my experience in the highs and the lows of uh, being part of the Ferrari team is something which has been very special to me. And of course, Lola. I may have had a major accident in one, but just the same. Some of the challenges that Eric Bordley and I sort of took on was uh, very satisfying. And I know that Jenks always thought the world of him, you know, on the basis that if ever there was going to be a knock-down, drag-out barroom fight for the lead and Surtees was in it, then Surtees had a darn good chance of winning. But he had an amazing car control, absolutely staggering. And I mean, he would make the car sing in a way that nobody else could. Someone asked me this a little while ago about winning at Monza in 64 and the way the reception with the Italian crowd. And I thought, it's very special. If anything, history underrates him. The Formula One side was frustrating. There was so much more we could have done. He was also a formidable sports car driver. I like the thousand kilometer races. I know you may tell about the dangers and things, but the old Nürburgring, the old Spa, very special. He's old school. I don't think you would deny it for a second. I certainly wouldn't say no to knocking the ears off and sitting in a car and adapting to the challenges of which you have today. It's so difficult for youngsters nowadays uh, to be able to progress their career. I only got on because I was quick. Well, now it's not good enough just to be quick. He can see how people are approaching driving a car and he'll always give his opinion on things you can do differently to help improve. In many ways, it's an honour, um, you know, to have someone like that in your corner. Just a wonderful warrior. And I think that Brits should be enormously proud that he's a wonderful British warrior, a real racer.